It's been almost a week since the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator and since that time we have discovered all the beauties, the capabilities of what this sim has to offer. Unfortunately we've also discovered some of the limitations, some of the problems when it comes to the systems, in particular the autopilot. And in this video I'd like to cover some of that, some of the common mistakes, how to make the autopilot work for you instead of against you. Let's do this. Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've gotten quite a number of questions and comments about this, so here it is, a video to hopefully help some people out, especially those who are new to the sim because the autopilot does not really have its own tutorial in the simulator so understandably those who are getting only into it only now would not be a bit uh, would be a bit would need a bit of guidance so to speak anyway so let's start things off flying off with the TBM 930 here no autopilot at the moment hand flying everything where do we start well we start with the panel right here right so this panel right here is responsible for your autopilot systems you see a lot of buttons you see a lot of acronyms that might be a confusing especially for the newcomers but let's take it one step at a time okay let's uh, first see how do you actually enable the autopilot well autopilot can be enabled or disabled using this button right here AP and when you do that the autopilot system is immediately enabled but doesn't do anything yet because there are certain factors that you have to understand as well what's important is and i cannot highlight this enough make sure you always look at the annunciator here on your pft on your primary flight display right there at the top the middle because this is annunciating this is displaying all the modes that you have enabled if you click on something here it's not always that it's active already. There are certain conditions. So depending if those conditions are met, then those will be announced here. Those will be made active or not. If it's green, then it's active. If it's white, then it's only armed. And there's a reason why it's only armed. Right? So in the, this concept is applicable to all the autopilot systems, regardless of which plane you fly. So even though it might look a bit different, the concept should remain the same. And we'll try to check out other planes later in the process. Okay, so anyway, so autopilot is on, but it's not doing anything. You see a roll and pit in here, AP, YD, what do those mean? Let's take things one step at a time. In terms of the enunciator, you have this left side, which is responsible for like the heading how your plane is facing left or right where it's headed so when it says roll here it's not actually doing anything that's just preserving the current roll of the aircraft so if i turn off autopilot i bank to the left so this is as you might have seen in the tutorial that stands for 10 20 30 degrees where my mouse is banking to the left so let's put it on 30 degrees like so and if I enable autopilot like this then it will preserve that roll yeah we are rolling we are banking and since we started in 30% then it will stay on 30% bank that entire time to just keep on making a circle there that's what roll mean means right so yeah as I mentioned this left side all about the heading we're not yet concerned about altitude. Let's work on that later. What other modes are av available? If we go for AP here again, that's rolling. And since we are level, it will try and remain level for us as well in terms of heading. But what if you want to go somewhere specific? Then that's where these buttons would come in. Heading and nav in particular would be what you would be mostly using. Heading. As you see, as I, soon as I click that with autopilot enabled, heading is enunciated. That means it's in heading mode now. That's the important thing. I will be emphasizing that every bit of the way. And that just follows what heading you selected. 
you see this heading bug here this knob and you see the heading enunciated there 270 so it will try and follow a heading of 270 degrees right and if you change that one second I'm here move that to the left then you see the plane also follows where you're going move it to the right the same thing or you click it to synchronize it to the current heading you are at then it will try to fly straight and level now how about nav mode this is one of the most common problems that people are encountering when they say autopilot is not working you have a flight plan so you have this magenta or white line depending on if it's active the active leg or not but your expectation is your plane should follow that magenta line right so normally what people would do is they would turn nav mode on that is actually the so let's put it this way in autopilot in roll mode press nav expectation is that should follow the flight plan but you see here nothing actually happens nothing got enunciated nothing changed it's in, still in roll mode and that is mainly because you see nav here active nav this one on the bottom of the pfd in the middle it says vor1 that means it's going it's going to try and follow what you set in vor1 and that is depending on the frequency you put in here 110.5 but since we ha don't have anything tuned then that means the plane doesn't know where to go so the way you make it follow that flight plan you set is actually changing the active nav vor2 but what you want is fms and you see immediately the plane is going to start to follow you see that magenta line now you see how far away you are from it in terms of the horizontal line so it will try and go and line you up properly with that flight plan that you set and you see also as i mentioned it enunciates now you are in fms mode and that's the important thing so if you try and toggle along these you see when you switch to vor1 it becomes roll mode again and what does roll mode do it just keeps that bank that existing bank you set so at this point you're just going in circles and even if you set back fms you're still in roll mode that's why it's absolutely important that you keep on monitoring what is enunciated exactly so how you refresh that you just press nav again and now you're in fms mode again now it's enunciated and now you'll follow that plan All right so that's one of the most common problems people are encountering when they say autopilot is not working it's actually just not activated it's not in the right mode now this active nav might look a bit different in different planes i think in g1000 uh, planes this active nav yes you can do that like maybe you'll have a cdi button here instead instead of active nav in the G5000, in the Cessna Citation Longitude, the nav source will be, like I guess, in the left panel, if I remember correctly. You change the nav source through here. But the concept is the same. Make sure the enunciation is correct. So you go nav mode and FMS is highlighted. So what it will try to do is it will change your heading so that you are on a, I think, a 30-degree intercept course. You see, we are trying to go towards that line 30 degrees trying to go along the same path 30 degrees away so the heading should be 020 plus 30 in this case 45 rather so it's probably 45 degrees intercept and when we are right at that line then it will follow the 020 but for now it we're in a 45 degree angle intercept anyway if that is not as important that's what those two different mod modes do and most of the time you'll be doing heading or nav yes as more advanced things go you can start tracking vors you know and uh, you'll can you can change the active nav that way we'll uh, try that later on in the approach but for now focus on that part so that is the one responsible for your heading now going on to the other side here on the right side you see pit what does that do that right side of the annunciator corresponds to the right side of the autopilot right here 
and that one is responsible for your altitude. So the left side is responsible for your heading, where you're facing left or right. The right side is responsible for your altitude. If you go climbing, you're descending, if you're maintaining your altitude. Oh, you see there. Because we're following the FMS, now that we're almost at that line, now it starts to join the 020 heading based on that flight plan. Isn't that cool? Okay. But, uh, yes, going to the altitude part. So we are on pitch at the moment. What does that do? Um, let's go and um, disable autopilot for the moment. If I say I want to, for example, pitch up 5 degrees, you see the PFT here, you see the marker at 5 degrees there, that's 5 degree up, 5 degree pitch up attitude, and I want to maintain that. So you can turn on autopilot that way, and you see PIT. PIT stands for pitch. So it would maintain that 5 degree pitch up attitude. That's basically what it does. It maintains what you set initially. But what if you want to climb to your altitude? For example, air traffic control gives you a clearance, climb to climb and maintain 3,500 feet, or climb and maintain 5,000 5, feet. So what you would do then is change your altitude, your selected altitude here using this knob. You see when you move that, the altitude here changes. So go to 5,000. So now you've told the plane you want to go to 5,000, but it still doesn't know how to. You know, there are different ways of doing that. Do you want to climb fast? Do you want to climb slow? So the plane does not have enough information yet. It just knows you want to reach 5,000, but how? So now you pick one of these modes. And uh, for us, we will be focusing on mainly VS, which is most of the time what you will be using, or FLC. VS stands for vertical speed, FLC is flight level change, if I remember correctly. But yeah, let's not, not get bogged up with the terms. So from pitch, if you click on VS here, then you'll see that gets enunciated, right? That's one step towards the right thing. But it also says here, zero FPM, that's zero feet per minute. And that means you are not climbing, you are not descending, you are maintaining your current altitude. So how you change that if you want to climb is you move this, how do you call it, knob right here, this wheel. So you can see the tooltips, increase vertical speed. You can use the mouse wheel as well. And you can change that, like let's say 1,000 feet per minute. That gets enunciated, that's important yet again. And here you see 1,000. And that's what the autopilot will tell you, will do for you. Right, so if you want that to become even more aggressive, then we can do that all the way. Go to 3,000 feet per minute, but be warned, look at that, we are losing airspeed. So you might need to throttle up so you don't stall. Depending on your plane's capabilities, that can or can be a bit, can be a bit dangerous. Alright, now let's say what other way is there? Well, there is also the FLC. In VS, you determine the rate at which you climb. But that can be dangerous, especially when climbing. Like what we, what's happening here, we're actually losing speed. That means 3000 is not a very healthy pace for us. So what we can do is do flight level change. And what that does is something different. This time, we focus on our current speed. So we're at 111 knots. You see there, enunciated as well. Again, 111 knots. It will maintain that 111 knots and will only climb as much as it can, but maintaining that. So if it can only climb up to 1,000 feet per minute, you see it here, then it will do that only. You see, it will not do the 3,000 feet per minute anymore because you want to maintain 111 knots. And this is a, a very ideal way of climbing because it keeps you safe. Make sure that you don't go, to, don't uh, fly too slow and stall. You also see some something here. The altitude, the enunciator changes from FLC. Now we are getting alt 5,000 feet. Now what does alt mean? That just means altitude hold. That's this one, this button. And I didn't need to click it because when you set an altitude, 
Then you tell the plane you want to get there. You set a VS or an FLC. You tell the plane how to get there. And then when it finally gets there, it knows it got there. Does that make sense? So it stops. It stops climbing. It knows that it's fulfilled its purpose, its objective. So 5,000 annunciated. And now we are maintaining 5,000. Now, if we want to descend to 3,000, it's the same thing. So first, we set the altitude. We tell the, the plane what you want it to do. We want it to descend to 3,000. Now you tell it how you want to do that. Because you can actually just, for example, do the VS again. Let's do it like this. Do the VS again and say, okay, uh, descend 1,000 feet per minute. So move the scroll wheel up. And that will follow you 1,000 feet per minute. Or you want to go the flight level change route. So it will try and keep, keep 146 knots in there. And it will only try and um, descend. But keeping that speed. So you might have to like lower the throttle here. So that the plane will pitch down. And keep that airspeed. You know, things like that. So a couple of differences. You can also even remove everything in there and just make it pitch. Remember pitch? It will just maintain what pitch attitude you have set before you enabled it. So it will just maintain that regardless of what speed or um, uh, vertical speed you're currently at. So yes, the annunciator is of absolute importance. And this annunciator is present in whichever plane you fly. It just looks a bit different. So the concepts remain the same, right? And what is this? This is just autopilot in your damper. Your damper is something completely different. Well, it's something for the fancier planes. It controls your yaw, your, your rudder. But it's not very relevant for autopilot at the moment, so I won't focus on that. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> Sightseeing. So yeah, regardless of which mode you pick, whether it's pitch, VS, or FLC, uh, now there's VNAV and speed here. I, uh, I don't think that is working. VNAV is not working yet, I believe, in most of the planes. So that is proven by when you click the VNAV, there's no annunciation. It doesn't get activated. So that's always, always annunciation. If you take one thing away from this video, the annunciator is key. So you know exactly what the plane is doing. So you see, even if we use the pitch mode, Nothing fancy, just hold that pitch down attitude. Um, my bad. Okay, when it's pitch, it doesn't really hold anything. It doesn't stop at that, that target altitude. Shouldn't it? Hmm. Anyway, so, and if you want to stop suddenly, that's what, just what I did. We were continuing to descend and I wanted to stop already. You just press the Alt. That's when this Alt would come in handy. So wherever you are currently, it would hold that current altitude. It would stop climbing, it would stop descending, and just try to fly level, right? So how do we go? Okay, let's see. Let's say we uh, want to continue with our flight plan here. So following that magenta line, how do we do it? You guys remember? Hit nav mode, right? Nav mode. And that will follow because we are in FMS, active Navis FMS. It will try and follow that. Now I'm stalling, so I don't have enough power. Don't worry, just kick it up a notch there, and we should be okay. There you go. <clears throat> now, in some planes, I'm not sure if. The FMS would activate immediately or you have to be facing it properly but let's not go into that detail for now let's stick to the basics so let's focus on the basics first so it's the same way uh, we are going to a certain waypoint and we are approaching it at a 45 degree intercept course and when we are close to it then we start merging into that actual course which is 290 degrees there you go so that's the basic logic of the autopilot systems. Now, one important aspect of the autopilot system is in the approach. And that can also get a bit tricky when you're about to land. 
and the system there can be quite different depending on what approach you pick so that can get a bit messy so what I'll do is I'll uh, showcase the different approaches here let's focus on two, uh, two approaches the RNAV or GPS approach and the ILS approach those are the two most common so if I go here procedure oh, there you go okay um, that's actually not what I wanted RNAV there you go so right now RNAV 2.0 is what's selected for me this in airport in particular has both an ILS that might be too small ILS 2.0 or RNAV 2.0 Let's go first with RNAV because that's simpler to use in this plane and in most of the G1000, 3000, 5000 planes that's more straightforward because with ILS you have to do uh, something additional but yeah anyway I'll meet you guys back there when we're almost in the path near the airport we're going here in Clark catch you guys in a bit Welcome back. Let's get inside the cockpit again. One thing I haven't shown you yet. Some of the other buttons here that are not part of that like left or right panel. This grouping, you see that white border. So that groups together the different sections. This is the one for the longitude, right? The left or right. This one is the latitude. I hope I got those correctly. Up or down, but you get the point. But what are these two? FD and Bank. FD is Flight Director. So it's that magenta thing that uh, is telling you which way to go. Because sometimes you want to have the guidance, the left and right guidance, the up and down guidance, to put it in basic terms. But you want to fly things yourself. So you want the guidance how to get there, but you don't want autopilot to be enabled exactly. So FD is almost always enabled like that because as the plane changes as it follows the flight plan as it changes the heading for example if I just choose to turn left a bit if I go to heading mode 015 we're currently heading 049 I go to heading mode like so you would see the flight director move that way right and if I want to go back to the flight plan I move the heading back there to intercept the magenta line and then I go to nav mode so it will follow that again so the flight director is just telling you which way it's going so it's clear and in case you turn off autopilot so I turned off autopilot I go to heading mode I move to the left like so I'm not sure if that's bugged or not though we'll have to see it looks like we are headed straight toward a mountain not the safest let me get out of this place first <clears throat> that's when you remove autopilot <laughs> let's go to 3500 feet here which is the recommended altitude for this one i think <clears throat> all right so how do you enable autopilot so you can have all these restrictions you see the flight director is changing it's uh though it doesn't seem to follow the heading that's what i should expect it's doing right there it is following the alt so because we said we want to maintain 3000 feet here the annunciation says altitude 3000 feet and we're currently at 3300 what it's telling us to do is go and pitch down like this so that we get to 3000 again so you can follow that that way but for some reason the the horizontal guidance is not working that's weird if I follow nav mode yeah it doesn't seem like that works for now but it should also like bank to the left and tell you that you have to turn left or something like that so let's go to nav mode and turn on autopilot now it's banking. It's only banking when it's autopilot, which is weird. It shouldn't do that. It should bank even if autopilot is disabled. 
So yeah, you can have it multiple ways as a form of guidance or a full autopilot. <clears throat> okay, now let's see. We are doing an RNAV approach here. Now an RNAV approach, you can select that in the flight planning phase when you're still in that world map view. If you pick the, 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 the origin and the destination and you pick an IFR flight, you choose the low airways or high airways and then you can assign an, an actual approach to this or let the air traffic control give you one however way it is set then you would get an RNAV approach here it can either be an RNAV, ILS or other types but most commonly it's RNAV or ILS okay there we go so let's go and descend to 2600 feet that is the final approach fix for this aircraft for this flight plan for this approach so we go vs and we descend now you see something that's come up that hasn't come up before or might, might not have focused on it you see the alt s here so you have a vs of minus 1000 but you also have an alt s what does that mean that's altitude selected and it's white because it's armed it's only armed but not active so now that it has become active it became green so that means alt s altitude selected we selected 2600 and that's the altitude that it's going to stop at so that's why it was armed because we weren't there yet now we're here now it's active all right here is the rnav approach when it comes to rnav approach it's simpler because you see this g here that appears when you get closer to the approach and the only thing you'll need to do then is to like say approach mode like that so when you arm the approach, you see a vertical alt in GP. GP stands for glide path, um, but it hasn't occurred yet. I think that will trigger. So as we see, it's armed, but not yet active. And currently, we're still maintaining 2,600 feet. So the trick here is to check if that will work later. Because it should be when you are in the middle of your glide path like this, you see the magenta line, the G here, and we are right in the middle. That should actually be a sign that we have captured the glide path. And that should arm it. That should activate it. So we'll see. Let's monitor that thing. Because we are on final here. Runway should be on our left, that one, ready. So let's see if that will change. I'm expecting it should by the final approach course part probably on that waypoint Lima Charlie 20 Bravo if it doesn't then I might have done something wrong but as always it's important enunciation so you see it's only armed and it's not working yet Go one set of flaps here lower the landing gears as well we're not going to land exactly though because that will take so much time so i will just wait for that to activate so with a with an rnav approach you don't have to do anything else you just have to wait for that g to appear this bar and when you're close enough right before you hit the the center of it right before that diamond that magenta diamond reaches the middle arm the approach because that will do something you see yeah as i mentioned it armed the glide path and that will allow you to descend even if you're set here 2600 even if you're on altitude hold like this but if you arm the approach then that should activate okay there you go so you see the magenta line is coming close once it reaches the middle here, the GP should be armed, should be active. Like so, there you go. And even though we set 2600, it got away from the altitude. You see GP is now active here. And now we are following the magenta line, the glide path. Exactly. And that's going to get us near the runway. And then when we're close, we... Uh, 
disengage the autopilot, disengage the yaw damper, and we land on our own. Yeah, so that's the basic thing. So with an RNAV, it's simpler, but I'll, I'll go away from it. With an RNAV, it's simpler. With an ILS, it's quite similar, but uh, there's an additional step. So I'll show you how that looks after the stuttering goes away. Things are loading in, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Give it some time. So what I can do here, let's try and fiddle with this. You can do this in the flight plan or I should be able to do this dynamically as well. Because if, for example, I want to change an approach here, let's see. Um, okay, let's go to heading mode, autopilot. Alright, let's head that way just so we're safe. And altitude hold. Or let's climb to 2,600 feet. VS, VS up. Let's leave that running as it is. Now let's see here. Um, so the, with the G3000, you set the flight plan over on this panel. Or it also can be here, but just press the MFD. With a different uh, aircraft, it might look a bit different. So you might be fiddling with buttons here instead on the panel itself. But the, the concept is the same. So I leave you guys to work on that on your own. You can see the flight plan here. That's blank, but that will load up later. There you go. Depending on what you set in your flight plan initially. Procedures, it will tell you which approach you're currently on. And the ideal thing would be that we can actually choose this one. So if I choose ILS20, I load and activate that. Is there a different transition? Oh, so many. Uh, back not sure which one that is let's pick that one let's see so if I activate that you see approach as now ILS 20 are we very close to the mountain again no at least not but yeah you see um, it's not the best one so I change that change to a different transition let's pick D106 mic See how that looks. Okay, there you go. Uh, D106 mic. It's, is there something closer? Okay, fine. I can do that on my own. Um, and then what I can do, because the flight plan, if you follow that, if you go to nav mode here, then it follows the FMS, right? If you, it follows the magenta line, it actually goes there first, which I'm not sure why. When we could do is go to the flight plan in here, go and pick the Delta 106 mic right here, click that. Oh, I can't even choose it, huh? Supposedly, you can go and go direct. But I think that doesn't happen in this case. Yeah, the direct to, I guess, is only for the destination, but not for the like, actual approach legs. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. So we can say, click that one. Direct to. Yeah, it's still a bit buggy. <laughs> okay, leave it as is for now. So the main difference I wanted to highlight is the ILS approach. Um, so what I can do is I can fly this plan for you and then I'll meet you again when we're close to final here. When we make that turn. Because that's where all the difference would be. Catch you guys in a bit. What a view. Alright, we are back guys. Um huh. few troubleshooting steps. Let's skip that for now. But what I wanted to focus is the difference of the ILS approach to the RNAV, in particular with the Garmin panels. With the Airbus, with the bigger airliners, I don't think you will have this additional step. Those should be tuned for you, at least for the Airbus, the A320. But in the Garmin panels, you'll have to do an additional step. So let's go and review. We are currently on the ILS20 approach. I selected that already. I showed you a while ago how, right? You should pick here, pick your transition, and it will become active if you load and activate it. Now, the main problem I saw, and I don't think it should do this, I think it sh this should be automatic is the ILS is actually uh, a frequency 
on the airport on that particular runway that you tune into so that you are given signals if you are close if you are on the right glide slope you know if your descent is on the right path so it gives you proper guidance using those signals but you have to tune into it and that means you have to be tuning to a frequency a nav frequency so if you go to the nav here navcom and go to audios and radios as i, as I mentioned it this is similar with every other garmin panel it's just in a different location uh, probably the buttons here on the left or the right side can change the nav one and two in particular nav one is where we're interested in you have to change this to the ILS frequency of where you're landing and the tricky thing is if you don't have a an external application where you can find that like Navigraph charts or uh, Google the frequencies for that airport the only way I found how to do that is for example here we are going to land at Romeo Papa Lima Charlie Clark Airport what I found is you can actually go to waypoint info airport and I'm not sure how to do this I think this is also available in G1000 let's focus here for now select airport and let's enter here Romeo Papa Lima Charlie it does detect that as Clark International and from here you can check the frequencies so these include the radio frequencies for air traffic control but also if you look here it says here the ILS runway 20 that's the, uh, the approach we picked is 110.10 from what I remember in the real Garmin it should automatically tune that when you get close but in my experience here it doesn't seem to automate it so what you can do is click on that make it the active nav1 so you, you see that transferred here you can even make that active or standby in nav2 so that's both 110.10 and what that did you might have not noticed um, let me see what I can do. Let's go to nav mode here. Right, there you go. And slow down a bit. Actually, slow already. All right. What that did actually... Let's transfer that one. And transfer this other one as well. There you go. Okay. So when you tune into that frequency, I'll make the 110.10 active, okay? Notice the G here on led to the left of the altitude. There you go. You see that G become visible. And that's uh, the glide slope. But the problem is it's white. And that's the important distinction. So with an ILS approach, you have to tune it. You have to tune the right frequency. And then you have to switch your active nav. Remember that FMS thing, the VOR1, VOR2? Those are actually the NAV1 and NAV2 frequencies here. And we're saying, when we're doing that final approach, once we've turned to the final approach here, once we've made this turn, we have to transfer active NAV to ILS. Something you didn't need to do in RNAV. And I think in the real Garmin, it should automatically switch but I think right now in this sim it doesn't do it yet so we'll have to do that a bit on the manual side so the f tuning of the frequency and the changing of the active nav is a bit manual at the moment but let's see okay let's see so we're at 2600 feet we see the glide slope but if you do an approach like this you see the the annunciator's GP with an ILS, you don't want it to be GP, you want it to be GS. Because glide path, P, is for our nav. GS, glide slope, is for the localizer, the ILS. Sorry, the glide slope. So the up clicking approach at this stage will not be very useful. Go to FMS. So it will turn final there. And what we'll have to do is we'll need to switch active nav to nav1 which is where we tuned in 110.10 over here so if i click on active nav right now you see instead of vr1 it says look one and we can even set like pfd settings here bearing one you see that it has captured nav1 as india charlie kilo each of the ils 
frequencies that you tune in have their own like uh, identifiers this one has that name and it says we are 10 miles away 10 dme away from it right? and now you see that the g has become green that's what you want when you make this into fms again like so that g becomes white so it's armed but not active so what you have to do is go to lock one tune that tune it first here in your radios enable it in the active nav and then you'll be able to follow it and you see the, the the green diamond line is coming close and it will do the same thing it would so now you see we don't have it armed yet and that's uh, an indicator for me that i've missed something so we have to arm the approach and this time it's going to say gs is armed so we can go actually i've had my landing gear down the entire time <laughs> my bad that's why i was super slow anyway so as the green diamond reaches the middle even though you set 2600 you have that altitude set once you reach the middle there that should then capture the glide slope and there you go it's enunciated and now you are descending and you're on your way to final approach right there so when you're close turn off autopilot turn off your damper land on your own yeah stuff like that so hopefully that helps out those are the two most common things ILS and RNAV with the airbuses with the airliners it's a bit different but the concept should remain the same and so I think what I will do I'm making the video even longer but uh, some people asked for this so I will make something again I'll catch you guys in the... Hmm, how should I do this? The Cessna Citation Longitude. Okay, I'll, I'll do that to show everyone how it works. Because that, um, that aircraft has an additional thing. It has a, an auto throttle. In addition to autopilot, it also has an auto throttle. So it can control the thrust you set. And that is an additional complication <laughs> in the system. Right guys, I'll see you there. Some of you guys might not be familiar how to set your flight plan, so I decided to show you a quick look at it. So here you set your origin and destination, right? Departure and arrival airport. So you pick the airport first, like so. But if you want to choose an approach, at this point you cannot because this is tagged as a VFR. So you'll have to go to IFR here, choose either low or high. And once you pick those ones, then you can get to choose the exact departure you are doing and the exact approach you want to do. So the, the one a while ago when we said ILS 2.0, RNAV 2.0, if you want that to be pre-programmed in your flight plan when you enter the plane, so you don't have to plug those in manually, you can choose from here. Okay, Just a little tidbit. Okay, I'll see you guys in the longitude. All right, now with the fancy jet, we'll see how this works. Let's go inside. A couple of things, very basic stuff. Let's go and set maybe altitude to around 5,000 since this thing shoots up like a jet. What you guys taught me is so you can set the auto throttle, you actually have to set a speed right here. You see it's zero. Thank you for the inputs, guys. I appreciate it. This is why we crowdsource this stuff. And how you do that, normally this is assigned to FMS, so it should capture whatever flight plan you have set. But I don't think that works yet. So you move that to manual, managed speed mode. And from there, you can change the speed by turning this knob. That will turn that one as well. Um, now, if I can get there, that is, and show you at the same time. There you go. Now, what I try to do is I go to, where is it? Oh, you see this one, the left side as I was mentioning. Nav source is again VR1. Change that to FMS so that it follows the flight plan. You see that magenta line. Um, but the speed bug as I, what I was needing, VY is the best rate of climb, 185 knots. And we can set, I guess that would be a good starting point to set our speed too. So we set 185 here. 
that would be I guess somewhat similar to V2 speeds in airliners 185 right there okay so that's it let's go ahead and rid of the parking brake hold the brakes up stable right there we go actually forgot what the rotation speed is around 120 140 knots i assume let's keep it here rotate if it works there it is beautiful all right positive rate gear up okay so now you see we are actually speeding up, up above but i can enable the auto throttle using this button right here arm auto throttle and you see it actually pitches it moves the throttle back so that it tries to match that speed right there it's still a bit finicky though it's not the best like it goes beyond it it goes below it but in general it works let's go and accept the handoff here so right now i'm not doing anything it's managing the throttle for me so that's a separate automation and now if you want to enable autopilot it's the same concept as i mentioned you engage the autopilot right so you see the same thing here roll in pitch you go and enable nav mode that goes to fms so that is arm so that's going to follow the magenta line and then the pitch you can say vs look for the vs right there so the 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 organization is a bit different on this plane but the same concepts apply Make it climb to 2,000 feet. And the additional beauty of this plane is because of the auto throttle, you can maintain that 185 knots the entire time. You can even actually set that to flight level change here. So you see 183 there, we can adjust that to 185. 186, that's fine. And it would try to climb as high as it can as fast as it can while still maintaining that speed so it uses both the pitch and the throttle to adjust your altitude and your speed and now it shoots up like a jet there you go should have forgot to put my flaps up there but that's the basic concept of how the auto throttle works on this plane but yeah, the, the concept of autopilot in general, the FMS, the ILS, that should remain the same regardless of which plane you fly. With the airliners, the layout will be significantly more different. There might be a few more buttons, but the same enunciation, different letters, but the same concept of enunciation would be there. Okay, so let me know if this helps. Let me know if you need help with some other things. Let me know if I missed something and uh yeah let's crowdsource this and uh i can make more videos if you want some more things clarified anyway hope this helps sorry for the long video but uh, thanks for watching have a nice day guys clumsy flying catch you soon